Hey, good evening, Lamb Chops. It is I, your favorite fluffy vampire, Booma. The fuck you mean looking for a game to capture? Yeah, that's what I thought. So, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So, yeah, no. Monday, when I was gonna stream this, I went to turn on, um, fuck, what's it called? Streamlabs, because I'm still using Streamlabs. I did download OBS, I just haven't got it set up yet. I'm doing okay, how are you? Um, yeah, so I did, I was still using Streamlabs, and like, as soon as I hit, click, like, go live, it started, but then Streamlabs said not responding, so I'm like, oh no. And then like, I waited for it to try and respond, and it didn't, it crashed. <laughs> And when I went to turn it back on, it said, this ge this file could not be found. I'm like, uh, what file? What, sh what you mean? Did my computer think it doesn't have Streamlabs anymore or what? And then Hakuoki also wouldn't open up. So we could, I couldn't even, like, even if I got in Streamlabs working on Monday, Hakuoki, I, I didn't know why it wasn't working. Um, it took me, I think, like an hour to get Streamlabs working again. And then an extra like 20 minutes of like restarting, reinstalling all that other shit for Hakuoki. So yeah, sorry. That's why we didn't stream Monday. It's just so many technical difficulties. So, but hey, tonight, hopefully, you know, it's Friday. So I'm thinking we can just finish, finish this book. Uh, from what I understand, this is the last chapter. So we just got to get through this and it's not too terribly long. And we're, it said we're officially in the Eva route, so this should be all about our man, you know? <laughs> so yeah, we all just start and get into it. Your day was okay? It's okay? Okay, good. Good. We're gonna vibe and relax now. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be good. We're gonna finish our fucking book, finally. It feels like it's been so long. I don't even remember when we started reading this one. Mm -mm. Okay. Here we are. Eva had warned me not too long ago I should leave Kyoto, but I had no time to make the decision. Kyoto's political climate had grown increasingly tense everywhere I looked. The threat of war loomed ominously as the shogunate and the Satsunu Shoshu prepared their armies. You had- oh, you had a bad night? Oh, I'm sorry, Rusu. That sucks, man. I know that can, like, just kind of fuck up your day, too. I'm sorry. As a precaution, the Shinsegumi was ordered to guard the Fushimi Magistrate, which was being fortified as a shogunate safeguard in Kyoto. Kondo joined an envoy en route to the Fushimi Castle as part of a delegation to discuss key strategies when it attempted his life critically wounded him. Not just one, but multiple. Oh no, I'm sorry, man. Dude, that sucks. The assailant was a gunman, so we needed to perform urgent care on him immediately, and the captains waited anxiously for updates. Also, no internet? Oh, fuck, really? I feel like they keep telling you your internet's gonna get fixed, like, really soon, and then they just don't. I'm so sorry. That is actually shit. I get gunshots always bad, but like back in like this Edo period, but you might change company actually. I mean, honestly, at this point, hasn't it been like so long and you still don't have internet? Yeah, get your fiber optic. Zoom, zoom, internet. Hijikata watched quietly, seemingly deep in thought, as he listened to Yamazaki's report. Eventually. might get it today. Okay, I'm hoping so, man. Hijikata hung his head low with a bitter expression as Shimada bowed his head apologetically. Going zoomies, exactly. What? <laughs> <laughs> 
Hichikata's order made me gasp. Had he been talking about... Oh yeah, what's his name, Okita? Harada was sharp, so I'm sure that he had been thinking about the same person I was. Tuberculosis. I knew it was some big bad disease, I just couldn't remember which one. After seeing Okita get worse and worse over the past few months, I had a feeling that this was the case. So, Okita officially had tuberculosis. To my knowledge, the disease was incurable. Once you had contracted it, all you could do was rest, hoping that you could do whatever it took to starve off the disease's progression. Until... Hijikata, who was probably more worried than anyone here, seemed focused on the future, trying to find solutions, even as things seemed grim. Given the circumstances, there was no way I could insert any of my own worries into the situation. On the contrary, it motivated me to do whatever I could to help them during this rough period. <laughs> hey, Daddy Hijikata, hey! After a few days had passed, I was preparing the arrangements for Kondo and Okita's departure for Osaka Castle, when... Oh, yeah. He's so tall, his he gets cut off. I can't miss it. Oh sure, please give me a moment. Damn, I didn't even read that. I just like read it in my mind. I quickly wrapped my up there clothing into bags and Shimada led me to the common room where I saw. <gasps> there he is! <laughs> Iba! <laughs> what you doing here? Ooh, fuck yeah! Eva! <laughs> Fuck yeah! You're looking for me? Yes! <laughs> exactly, exactly! <laughs> he sighed lightly, and then Eva turned to face Ichikata. Eva bowed his head, closing his eyes for a brief moment. He too had shared a long history with Kondo, so I'm sure he was worried about the possible outcome of his condition. However, he snapped back as if preventing himself from ruminating on what could possibly be. <laughs> Hijikata shook his head slowly. I wondered who the third person was. It couldn't have been any of the captains since all of them were needed at the magistrate. Oh, me, I'm going. <laughs> Duh, bitch, there's our man. Of course we're going. What, me? Eva's voice is actually really good. Oh my god, agree, agree, agree. I had absolutely no idea that I'd be going to Osaka, so I naturally was dumbfounded. Ah, that makes more sense. Hijikata's intentions were good, and what he had said made sense, but he's like so young and elegant. Exactly. So good. But you still like Daddy Hijikata. Fair. You have him. I'll take the right, you take the left. We're good. <laughs> You know, I've been wondering about that, too. Like, because in the next Hapuoki book, when I read it, I was doing um, Kazuma's route. So I was like, damn, wait. No, but now that we're like in the thick of Eva's route, I wonder, is does this book end every time with you getting separated from the Shinsegumi somehow? Because that's kind of how the next book, like the whole point of the next book, was you trying to find the Shinsegumi. 
but that was just Cosmo's route. Anyway, anyway, I, I let myself get distracted. What are we doing? Uh, then he looked over at me as if he was hoping for me to say how he felt about my idea. Let's split it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How should I respond? Well, obviously, if those are the commander's orders, then I should go with Eba. Who am I to judge? Am I right? Honestly, I had no desire to leave the Shinsugumi with all that was going on, but if those are the commander's orders, then I'll accept it. As I gritted my teeth subtly, I was internally screaming for accepting the order I didn't want. My heart sank like a heavy stone in my chest as the reality of leaving began to settle. When Hijikata heard my answer, he closed his eyes, perhaps a little relieved, but then... As usual, Iba seemed to see right through my intentions, and his question got right to the point. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, sorry, I just had to quick check the game audio. Iba had already impressed upon me the importance of escaping Kyoto as soon as I could. Considering his own duties, there was really no need for him to look after what I wanted. But even then, Eva had been watching out for me. The manner in which he acknowledged the position I was in and put what I wanted into consideration gave me the confidence to speak my mind. If I told either of you that I wasn't concerned with Kondo or Akita, I'd be lying. I think having someone by their sides to treat them and care for them is important. However, if war were to break out soon, as you suggest, then will what will become of the others here? When I think about all the men who may suffer serious injuries here, it pains me to think that I'll be abandoning them all to leave for Osaka. After I spoke my mind, Iba's eyes twinkled kindly as he turned to Hijikata. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, the lady. Oh, shit. Get it, girl. Yeah. Woo. I won't resent you. Are you fucking serious? God. Now let me cook steady. <laughs> Riz him up. I got. I you believe in you? Get him. He Kata curled his lip bitterly, and he let out a troubled sigh. <laughs> Woman. <laughs> Hichikata thinned his eyes at Iba, and Iba simply laughed it off. However, Hichikata's tone shifted back to a serious one. Hijikata expressed confidence in the shogunate's odds, but Eva's answers vexed me. Usually, Eva trusted whatever Hijikata said and responded with a smile, but this time, not even Eva's handsome. <laughs> Sorry. So, not, but this time, not even Iba's handsomeness could hide the lines of worry on his face as he tried to play it off. <laughs> so pretty he could lie whatever he wants, apparently. Iba, why can't I just go with you? Of course. <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Please come this way. I led Iba to where Kondo and Akita had been resting. Expression one, handsome as your fuck. <laughs>
God damn. Yo, I kind of wish we would have did Okita's route a little bit. Just because I really, really dig the angsty ones, you know? Like him realizing he has this, like, incurable disease would be, oh, just so, so good, you know? wrong with Sanji? Oh, Soji? Soji has tuberculosis. This is the one they were talking about earlier where they want him to go to Osaka too because the doctor is there. The doctor is going to treat Kondo's gun wounds and hopefully help Okita. Ah. <laughs> Okita struggled to breathe, continuing to cough painfully as he was taken outside. Then Kondo too was moved from the building. Watching you at 144. Sag. Oh god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's rough, bro. Hichikata assured Kondo confidently. Then Kondo seemed to relax a little from his words. Hichikata nodded his head deeply. After we watched the Yugeki unit carry the two of them out, Iba turned to face me one last time and asked me a question. How did to I don't know. Hold on. We we got time. Let me Google this. How do you get tuberculosis? Uh it is spread through the air from one person to another. The germs are passed through the air when someone who is sick with it dies, cough or oh, sorry, not dies. Uh it's passed through the air when someone who is sick with tuberculosis coughs, laughs, sneezes, sings, or any breathe at all. Oh, Oh, you, uh, I guess you breathe near someone else who has it. That's how you get it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> My man was so unlucky. Some dude on the street sneezed and now he's dying. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm sorry. I shouldn't laugh. It's a serious disease. Is Wait, is there still not curable? Hold up. <laughs> is there a cure for tuberculosis? Uh, most people with tuberculosis disease will need to take a medicine for it for at least six months to be cured. Okay, well nowadays there's a cure, uh, but I guess back in the Edo period there was not. <laughs> Which makes sense. This must seem like some magical disease to them too back then. Like, how would they even know that it got passed through the air? That's rough. Sorry, Okita. That's rough, buddy. And no, Eva, I'm not sure. I wanted to follow you. That's the whole point of this route. Without any hesitation, I nod my head, you lying bitch. Yep, that's the path I chose. The fuck it is. Eva's eyes sparkled, and he seemed like there was something he wanted to say, but instead he just thinned his eyes. As a cool breeze blew against the background of the sunset, Eva closed his eyes slowly. He paused for a moment, basking in the silence. Then he spoke softly. Practically to himself. <coughs> oh, sh <coughs> oh, shit, you want to force me? Bro. Huh. <laughs> shit, we're only 20 minutes in. This is too early for this shit, Eva. You gotta, like, reel it back. You gotta watch how you phrase some shit, bro. Also, here's ASMR. I'm opening my drinky. Oh, yeah, you know, if the book was actually letting me pick my path, Eva, trust me, I'd be with you. No, no, I wouldn't. I promise you I wouldn't. All I could do was stare at the ground. I knew that my decision would had hurt someone very close to me. I wasn't so oblivious that I couldn't see how I what how what I wanted was against what he wanted. Nice, thank you. <laughs> I 
Eva had warned me of the this back during the Oimia, o Oimia incident. What do you think the chances of victory are? Eva expressed the anxiety in his past, that the ha Hatamoto and the shogunate vassals were in no way prepared for such a serious conflict, and the shogunate had experienced such defeat during the second Choshu expedition. He was suddenly grabbed a hold of my hand, and he drew me closer to him almost forcefully. Fuck yes! I love you. <laughs> Bro, I said I wanted to go. Now he's gaslighting me. The drama. Basically, Eva doesn't want to lose you for any reason, incident, or anything like that. Yeah, I, mean, I know that. But then he should have just let me come with. Sorry, I'm like, don't worry, Muffin. You didn't miss a whole lot. Where's your daddy? I don't know where the fuck Hijikata is. <laughs> he was here and then he wasn't. Uh, okay, let's let's get Muffin up to speed. Okay, so basically, Kondo got shot, and Dr. Moyamoto is in Osaka. Therefore, we need to get hit gunshot wound to Dr. Man. But there's a war brewing, right? So, Iba is here to escort Gunshot Man to Osaka, and also Okita is dying of tuberculosis. We learned that. They confirmed it. Uh, Hijikata brought me outside to talk to Iba and said, Hey, you and your magic, not vampire demon blood can go with them because you know how to be a doctor. And therefore, you will have them survive on this trip to Osaka. And I said, yes, of course I'll come with on a trip that Iba is escorting. Of course I will come with. And then Iba said, no you won't. You want to stay here with the Shinsegumi. And then my character said, you know what? You're right. I'd love to stay here and not go with you. And I lost my mind a little bit. Because I'm like, what the fuck is the point of the Iba route if the game's not going to let me go with Iba? But that's fine. So now, here we are, saying goodbye as Eva and the two injured parties are making their way out the gate, and Eva is telling me, hey, there's definitely gonna be a war. Don't die, I swear to god. And I'm like, why didn't you just let me come with you? And now he's getting in my face like, I should have forced you to come with me. And I'm like, bitch, I said yes, you should have just let me come. Anyway. <laughs> Magic, not vampire blood. Make you no no remember our dad's a doctor and he taught us things. This ending is apparently gatekeeping gaslighting. It really feels like it, and I'm oh, I was getting so worked up. We were cooking, and yeah, Hijikata was also here. Rusu was having a good time. I was having a good time. Like Hijikata and Ibo were on the screen together for like a good few minutes, and we were both just like ha. Ah. <laughs> All right, all right. So he's basically telling me survive no matter what was cooking. I had to google how you catch tuberculosis, by the way. We were confused as to how he got it. It turns out you just need to breathe near somebody who has it, and that's how you get tuberculosis, in case you were wondering. <laughs> this is the worst Heisuke, and bruh. Bruh, I'm- Fuck Heisuke. He's the only motherfucker who betrayed us. Because we learned last time that Saito was a spy. So that's why he went with the, the motherfucker. The I icky man. I forget what is Ito. Ito. Oh wait, he actually got TV? I thought his I thought that was me. No, he actually got TV. He has TV. That's why we he, he's like getting escorted to Osaka because he can't fight anymore. And they're like, damn, he's literally on his deathbed. I guess we should send him to the doctor as well. That's where we're at. <laughs> I took the right side, Luma took the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, bitch, oh. His hands quivered as they clasped mine. As children, we'd held hands numerous times. When he would read to me, I remember thinking of how soft and delicate his hands were. And now, even as we've grown up, his hands were still giving me great warmth and comfort. 
I must do whatever it takes to not break his heart. Bitch! Late because I'm in the middle of a road trip to Texas? Oh, fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Yeehaw. Everything's better, bigger in Texas, right? That's all I know about it. Oh, and that Texas used to be its own country. <laughs> oh, you're gonna go see the eclipse? Oh, fuck yeah. People were telling me about that, like, at work. How, like, they're driving down there because... They're gonna go there because that's where you can get the best view. And they were also saying, like, and then the night before the eclipse, which is, I guess, Sunday? They, they're they gonna go down there, they're going to Texas, and as soon as they get the weather report for which state is gonna be the clearest, they're gonna drive in either direction to get the better view of the eclipse. I was like, wow, you are committed, sir. Um, I'm gonna be in, still here in Minnesota. Thank you. <laughs> The Amazon warehouse was smaller than the one I, I have near home, but there was an ass load of other massive warehouses. Oh shit. Dude, you know what I learned about warehouses today? Uh, so Garda, uh, if you don't know what Garda is, it's the armored truck security service that delivers money from the federal treasury to the banks. Their main headquarters in California got robbed. <laughs> And they lost $30 million to, like, two people. Two people, like, robbed them. I was just like, holy shit. Anyway, when you said warehouse, it made me think of that. They're, they're like, main headquarters. That looks like a warehouse got robbed and lost, like, $30 million. <laughs> you didn't want to drive 600 miles to see it in person. You believe it or not, I'm good. Uh, right. Oh yeah, we're reading about how he's gaslighting me. I forgot. As we neared our goodbyes, my heart felt heavy with anticipation of missing him. Bitch, why didn't we just go with? I promise. I promise you that I'll never do anything to hurt you, Eba. As I gave him my promise, he shared with me the same familiar smile I had grown to admire. <laughs> Then almost painfully, he released my hands, and so he left with Kondo and Okita. As I watched him leave, I spoke to him internally. Thank you so much, Iba. I vow to keep my promise no matter what. So please, be safe as well. As the winds carried the dead leaves around my feet, I stood there watching Iba leave until the small on his back disappeared into the horizon. That was a loud ass car. I'm sorry. We have the window open because it's actually nice out today. <laughs> Hope I can see I'm 4K, bruh. <laughs> 140p, I'm so sorry, Usu. January 3rd. I forgot to look at what day it was when they left. <laughs> I wonder how long it's been. Oh, shit. <laughs> Almost a month had passed since the Shinsugumi was tasked with guarding the Fushimi Magistrate. I wonder if I'm gonna get the tragic. Don't. 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 No. <laughs> Big Sag. Risu, no. We, we got this. We gotta believe that all those butterflies we got were for him. Tensions were still brewing between the Shogunate and the Satsuma Choshu armies. Our enemies attempted night raids and in instigated small skirmishes, doing everything they could to provoke the Shinsugumi into a retaliation. Oh my god, that actually kind of scared me. Jesus Christ. As it seemed, both sides were coming to a point. It took only one gunshot for the war to break out. Shit. Didn't that, like, some famous U.S. battle start like that, too? Ah! Merc. <laughs> Stop. I'd heard the thunderous explosion outside, as if the sky fell and crashed in all of Kyoto. I hope no one was new. I hope... I hope no one I knew was hurt. Oh. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold. No, is that... <laughs> Please, anyone out there, stay safe. I clasped both my hands tightly and I began to pray to myself for hope. Then I felt a soft hand tap my shoulder with the tips of its fingers.
You know it. I know he was trying to comfort me so that I could remain calm, but the hellish sound of gunfire from outside, without any idea of what was going on, oh, it made it difficult to think about anything else. I assume the gunshot came from outside since I'm in Texas, like, bruh. <laughs> Doesn't this worry you, Inoue? The Shinsugumi men have been fighting alongside you for years, since Edo, too. Edo gave a small, kind smile, tilting his head slightly as he answered. I hope no one knew. <laughs> Listen, that's what it said! I'm just reading. <laughs> you know, it's like the chip on his headband is so perfect, it's almost like his thick ass eyebrow is poking through it. You see what I'm saying? And the eyebrow, like, closest to us. Dyslexia. Bruh. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I always wondered if I had that, but I think it's just- I think I'm just stupid. I don't think I have dyslexia. I think I'm just straight up stupid. Uh, everyone has their roles to play. Yes. <laughs> you know, I had a way of words and subdued my anxieties, even if I grew more nauseous. I wasn't sure if it came off that way to him, but I was becoming almost sick with worry. Thank you, Noe. I think I understand what you mean. Everyone has roles to play. I guess for me that meant my role is to treat whoever was injured with a tumultuous time. After all, I was the one who had decided to stay back, so I must do everything I can to support them. And just then... Yo. You look kinda fine with all your battle gear on, son. Yo. A colorblind dyslexic and blind bro serious I'm s wow shit I'm sorry I had a friend in art college who was colorblind he like uh, I don't know what sh the technical name for it was but he was the one where blue looked green I guess and you're not joking oh shit I'm sorry it's me no you're joking oh shit okay good <laughs> You are okay. See, I can't. I can't even fucking read that. I swear to God, I'm just stupid. <laughs> English was my first language. I speak it fluently, which means I suck at it. It's a. <laughs> it's just a prank, bro. It's just a prank. Right, right. What were we doing? Oh yeah. <laughs> Soma, who had been recently joined the soldiers defending Kyoto, was nervous when he asked. Of course. Let's prepare our treatment stations. Can you please fetch some water as well? Welcome. Soma sprinted towards the well. Okay, so for now I need to fold my clean cloths and I need to find some needles and stitches. As I was making a mental list of necessary supplies... Like that. Can you even call yourself Japanese? You're not letting us enjoy our porridge. The actual name is I'm dyslexic, blind, color, and race. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even know that was a meme. <laughs> Soon after, warriors that I'd seen leave the magistrate to fight were being rushed in for treatment. From what I'd seen, the fighting must have been horrible. The soldiers were all covered in soot from head to toe. Hey, is everyone safe? Bro. Alright. As Saito had ordered me, I was looking after the main men when it seemed to pour in. Welcome to the Hispanic me. <laughs> okay. So this may sting a little. Luckily, many of the men I was treating didn't have a life-threatening injuries. At least I could take solace in this, and I approached Nagakura to ask him something. Um, any word on how the war's going? Huh? But? From what Hijikata had told me, the shogunate forces were well armed and more than enough to handle the Satsuma Choshu in Kyoto. Oh, I see. This is probably what Ibo was thinking when he was like, Yeah, I mean, the numbers are fine, but I'm worried about something else. They have guns, <laughs> and we have knives. <laughs> Shit. You actually had a friend who have a friend who's colorblind, he sees purples as blues? That's so weird. Well, does that mean he can't see red? 
Like he he's he's red blind. Cause red and blue is purple, so if he can't see red, purple would look blue, right? <laughs> don't know to be honest, that's fair. That's fair. I don't know. I it was always so weird to me to think about color- Cause like, for the longest time I thought being colorblind meant that like, you saw it like in grayscale all the time. And not- like it wasn't until like, I don't know, what is it? That one guy- Oh, uh, he's Nanner's boyfriend? Husband? Husband? Nanner's husband? Who was like, he was doing that colorblind thing on stream. And he was like, this is how I see Iron Mouse. And it was like, all the pinks were gone. And she was just like, devastated. He's, she's like, you've never seen pink? Oh my god. <laughs> Ugh. I knew that despite the bad news Nagakura and Harada were sharing with me, there had to be some good news happening somewhere else from them. But even so, it seemed like the Shogunate was experiencing a tougher fight than anticipated. Oh yeah, he saw it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sano, back me up, bro. Sano, back me up, bro. The men smoke with such fearlessness, as if today were just another day. Strangely, though, it only served to worsen my anxiousness for what's to come. Talking about colorblind, I saw a drawing Alistair as an angel. Ooh. Oh shit, clicked a button. Oh fuck. Afterwards, Nagakura, who volunteered to lead a troop and charge straight through the enemy's front line, was growing more dechanted. Oh! I heard a new has been hotel theory that Alistair is colorblind. I don't know if it's. I don't think it would be true, but like if it was, that's so funny. Because like deer are colorblind. They can't see. Oh, again, I forget which colorblindness it is, but basically it makes it so like everything's really dull except blues. And so like <laughs> they were like, so this is why he like m likes making fun of Vox so much because he's just like an LED neon blue screen. It's like the only thing Alistair can see the color of and that's why he gives him so much shit. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, you saw that too? Oh yeah, fuck yeah. I thought it was so interesting. I was like, oh shit, that that would be like a neat neat, neat little uh, tidbit if they did make him like colorblind like a real deer. But I don't think that would be how they roll. I feel like it would have came up at some point already. But who the fuck knows? I don't know. They could do whatever they want. They could say that Alistair was blind completely and he uses his teeth to smell. Like, it wouldn't fucking matter. <laughs> It'd be funny, yeah. Uh, the Shogunate army had 15,000 men. Right, we gotta, like... Huh, I gotta try and focus. Who knows how long this chapter is gonna fucking be. The Satsuma Choshu had less than a third of that, and yet the momentum seemed to be on their side. You have been rejuvenated. Fuck yeah. He's just so handsome, he really is. Finally got food. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. My, my dinner I had before stream was my leftover lunch that I didn't finish. All my chicken and some fries. <laughs> As the war continued, it wasn't only the Fushimi magistrate that was experiencing harsh fighting. Based on the reports piling in from the fronts, the Shogunate and Satsuma Choshu troops were clashing everywhere the men were stationed. This included Yugeki unit, to whom Eva was affiliated around the Yodo de- Bruh. He better not be. Leftovers be good? It's true. It's true. I could only imagine where the man who had lamented the very idea of war coming to fruition could be at a time as frustrating as this. Nothing like not needing to prep. Yes, yeah, true. It's true. Was he away from the fighting? Was he hurt? Eva, please stay safe. The scent of gunpowder stung my nostrils, and I watched the sky darken above. Two days had passed since the fighting broke out. January 5th, 1868. Oh my god, again. The frequency of cannon fire confused me as to whether- Oh, they have cannons?! Oh, that makes this way worse, doesn't it? The frequency of cannon fire confused me as to whether they were approaching us or if they were just celebrating their victory prematurely. Oh no, Bacchus. <laughs> All I knew was the cannon fire became non-stop. 
concerned. It's a big concern. Are you kidding? Silver warriors lying injured on the bed jumped from the frightening sound. It's all right, everyone. There's no need to worry. Please, just rest. I had made attempts to comfort the warriors as they began to panic, but then... Uh, it sounded like the cannons were cracking the building directly, bursting through the walls. Dude, I think they were busting through walls. The cannon fire was crumbling the roof above, and in that moment, I prepared for it to crash on top of me and kill me, but then... Hey, Ske. I heard a familiar voice. Are you fucking serious? Hey, Ske. Sat on too. I must have been because the sun was rising, but the two had returned from their night raid. As, how is it out there? Stop! No, not Heisuke ending! Not Heisuke ending! No! 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 Risu! <laughs> what are you- <laughs> Risu sees the next man with a ponytail and goes, Hey, gorgeous, you got a wife! <laughs> oh, God. Oh, good. I see that's what you guys were doing. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> if our captain's swordmanship and our fury corpse combined weren't enough, then... Shit. As Sonnen muttered his cynical musing to himself, cannon fire rang in the background. Suddenly, who's he? Who's who? You're asking me who Heisuke is? Or are you asking me who Sanon is? Which one? Oh, shit. Shit. There we go. Hijikata, Inoue! Hijikata nodded his head to the two men, and Sanan remained stoic, offering no greeting. Heisuke. He was one of the Shinsegumi... He was just like one of the guys- he was one of the Shinsegumi captains. When Ito said he was gonna leave because something whatever happened, um... He was like, okay, I'm leaving, and then because Heisuke was like, yeah, I went to school with him, I'm gonna join his side. And so then we hadn't seen him since. <laughs> he just kind of left. I think it would have been more dramatic had we actually been like going for his route, but like... He was literally just like, alright, bye. Yeah, and Sana got injured in like chapter one. And he had to... Why do they have white hair? Isn't he even... No. No, that's the thing. Heisuke... I think we saw it in like one snippet last chapter where it said Heisuke had gotten really hurt during one of the raids that this other faction was doing the other faction was doing and he got hurt so they gave him the the thing to make him a, a fury yeah he took the potion when he went to the yeah 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 that makes so much sense <laughs> Hijikata bit his lips, balling a hand into a tight fist as his comrade shared his opinion. Hijikata's display made each of us aware of how frustrated, how hurt he must have been. In the past, Hijikata always seemed two steps ahead on the battlefield, and with his courageousness and his intelligence. So seeing him uncertain at the idea of defeat seemed like something that was impossible for a man of Hijikata's experience to swallow. Daddy, <laughs> take me <laughs> But eventually... Uh, if I remember correctly, Heisuke said he was following Ito because it, Ito brought him to the Shinsugumi. He did- did he say that? I, 
He also definitely said something about like having been to the same sword, like sword school, something about being in the same school or clan or whatever dojo. Like they learned swordsmanship together. I definitely remember that being part of it. I don't, I don't remember everything else though. It was Heisuke, so the you know fuck if I was actually reading it. <laughs> this is just love and Hijikata moment here. That's what you remember. And you're not too sure. I, either way, we know Heisuke went with Ito, drank the fucking not a vampire serum, and here we are. Hey, you freed. <laughs> Very tired from driving, that's fair. The words seemed to cause him pain as they left his mouth, and he turned to face the captains. He just kind of go, oh my god. <laughs> I couldn't just sit and listen to them as they prepared to move into action. Um, is there anything I can do to help? He just kind of shot me one of his glances, and it seemed to indicate to me that he was annoyed. Sanon, on the other hand, paused for a moment before answering my question. Hey, Luna. How are you? About the Furies. I gulped at the thought. I had many horrible feelings toward the serum brought into the Shinsegumi by my father. Understood. I will protect them with my life. Sanan was com communicating to me that there was, could be no mistakes, that this was irreplaceable. My legs began trembling as I began to consider the burden of responsibility Sanan had placed on me. I looked at Sanan straight in the face and nodded. Got it. We'd walked down the hallway, walls rumbling from the cannon fire, and Sanan handed me the documents before Inoue and I left for Osaka. The amber sun was setting in the smoky sky. Since we'd been retreating with many injured Shinshigumi warriors in tow, it was difficult to move quickly, and we had passed for time. Inoue, do you think everyone else made it out safely? Oh shit, we're all splitting up. No, I haven't. Everyone has their role. So no matter what, all I could do was be patient and prevent myself from acting rashly. Walking on unpaved rows, I nodded to Inoue. Just then. The echo of nearby gunshots startled me and I gulped. Inoue ducked down, hiding behind a tree to get a better view of the surroundings. His confirmation made me grip the ban- I almost said fucking banana. Grip the bandana on my waist tightly as my hair stood in fear. Did I see your clip? No, I didn't. I'm sorry. I totally forgot to go look at it after the last time you told me to go watch it. Harada had mentioned how these new guns could fire from even further distance than usual. If we were caught, we'd be done for. Right. You know, I whispered softly, and we hid in the shady bushes as we waited for the men to pass. Oops. Okay. Uh, Inoue, where are we? 
As we left the main road to hide from the enemy patrol, Inoue and I had found ourselves separated from the rest of the convoy. During our initial escape, a warrior had told us that other domains were joining the war. Domains that had previously declared neutrality were now siding with the Satsuma Choshu to kill off any shogunate men, including the leadership. Yodo. If I remember correctly, Iba's Yugeki unit was close by. Was Iba still safe? Just then. <laughs> Your internet, oh boy. I hid in the shadows, just as Inoue had commanded me to. After a few moments, I heard the tap of footsteps and a shadow soon followed. Who could it be? From what I could make out, it looked like a monk, or maybe a doctor? What would it be doing out here? As the shadow drew closer, the person's features became clearer. Then I gasped. It was my father! Wow, I knew it. Oh my god. <laughs> bald! 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 <laughs> as the word left my mouth, I froze, watching in disbelief as to what was happening before me. There stood father, who I'd been searching for this whole time. Kondo Yukimura. As he heard my voice, father slowly turned around. My eyes! Yeah! <laughs> Your mouth is so fucking weird, bro. I had longed to hear that familiar voice for so long that I almost cried. Inoue, would it be alright if I showed myself to my father? I turned to Inoue, asking for permission despite the possibility threat of enemies nearby. However, Inoue's eyes thinned as if he were still suspicious, but then... Ah! <laughs> Here, we gonna go get my sunglasses. <laughs> he kindly obliged me, bowing his head. I nodded back to Inoue, sharing with him a momentary grin before I walked out of the bushes. Father, is that really you? Need those eclipse-proof ones, yeah. <laughs> At long last, it was him. I was so flushed with so much emotion that it made me lightheaded. Father smiled brightly, and it seemed like he had almost choked up as he greeted me. <sighs> the only response I could muster was a slow shake in my head. Words struggled to come out. At some point, I honestly started to believe that I would never see him again. But there he was, right in front of me, looking as healthy as I wished he to be. They almost look like they're the same person. Almost. Almost. What are you doing here? Where were you all this time? I wonder if he's bald, so it's hard to tell if he's a not vampire. Bruh. I mean, honestly, that probably checks out because aren't we supposed to be like some demon princess? So that would make him a demon too, yeah? His eyes suddenly gazed into mine. He was kidnapped. Taken captive. The horrible image of someone taking my father as prisoner made me flinch. But my father continued on describing his journey without going into great detail. Is it not vampire demon? Yeah, in this book. In this in this novel, the like not vampires, they call them demons. Unless he got a got with a demon princess. It's true. It's true. But then I feel like the plot hole there would be that Kazuma has already stated that he wants me specifically because I'm like one of the pure blood demons. As in, no human blood is in my heritage kind of demon. So... Yeah. Father. As he recounted his story, I could feel the anguish he must have been experiencing. I didn't want him to worry anymore. There was so much I needed to ask him, and so much I've been wondering about. But Father, let's go to Yodo Castle. The Shinsugumi men are there, and I'm sure they'll keep us safe from the Satsuma Choshu troops. In response, however, my father shook his head. Huh? 
Father? What Father said it seemed a little strange, and his tone became stern, confusing me a little bit. If he were an ally of the Shinsugumi, surely he'd want to seek to rejoin them or contact the Dokugawa clan for aid. So why? And then it hit me. He had said he was taken captive to some place far away. So how did he have any idea that I had been staying with the Shinsugumi this whole time? The pieces weren't adding up, and the sense of unease worried me so much I began to back away. He always stepped in front of me, guide, guarding me as he seemed to pick up the inexplicable strangeness. Then father's tone became completely cold, one of which was completely alien to me. Oh, fuck. Inoue dead. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> A haunting chill crept down my spine. I couldn't put my finger on it, but it was there. This wasn't the father I knew. And just then... <gasps> I sensed someone was standing behind me. And as I turned around, I saw... <sighs> oh! Oh! Look at his hand! Look at his hand! Look at his hand! He's He's got that fucking... He's got that thing... Oh! That's a claw! That's a claw! Cause... Remember Iba cut off that hand? Oh shit. It was Takeda, the Shinsugumi's former captain of the 5th Division. Konoteoda! Yeah, he was right behind me too, bro. You know, his eyes widen incredulously as the sight. Stab wound. Bro lost his arm. Dude, this music too. father had saved Takeda's life? A man who called me a monster? Who threatened to reveal all of the Shinsugumi's secrets was working for my father? He must have been the one who had informed my father of my involvement in the Shinsugumi. As I attempted to make sense of all this information, father seemed oblivious to my reaction, smiling straight at me. Then, he reached his hands out to me, the same hands that used to comfort me as a child. I couldn't bring myself to accept his hand as easily as I would have in the past. Fuck no! You know, he whispered discreetly to me. Before I'd left Kyoto, and before I had met everyone in the Shinsugumi, taking father's hand would have been required- wouldn't have required a second thought. That was a really creepy smile. It was, wasn't it? Oh my god. I- However, I was far too bothered by something to not be suspicious of all this. More than anything, too, Sanan, Heisuke, Hijikata, and the rest of the Shinsugumi had placed their faith in me. As it stands, I trust in the men of the Shinsugumi far more than I trust my father. Inoue smiled kindly at my response, and it was in the moment that I made up my mind. Oh. Then, he reached his hand to the grip of the sword on his waist, unsheathing it in a quick moment. Oh shit, yeah, Inoue dead. Inoue dead, dead. His words sunk heavily, as if there was some finality to them, and it made me nervous. It was as if he didn't expect to come back from me, eventually. Inoue? I anxiously called out to him, my voice shaky, but he looked at me with tire tired eyes, grinning once more. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> Move, blue my shit's going down real bad. For fucking for real. We can't break our promise. We gotta go. I made a promise to Eva. A promise that he- I wouldn't leave him regretting in his trust. Yeah! Yeah! I- I understand. <laughs> there was no way I could be okay with abandoning Inoue, but 
if I wish to fulfill my duties for the Shinsegumi in honor and the trust Sanan placed in me, this was the only choice I had. Understood. I couldn't even look at Inoue in the face as I answered him, so I kept my head facing the ground. However, I kept myself from crying as he continued to speak. You'll have remember, Inoue. Yeah. Good girl. Do not try and bust out that line on me. <laughs> I knew that Inoue had said it jokingly, but the unspoken alternative made me want to cry. There were simply no words to say in return. Inoue had pointed the tip of his katana towards Takeda and my father. Only Eva can say that. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I love how they, like, did that little framing. Because they didn't want to draw Takeda in too many different frames with the new hand. You know? <laughs> That covered up, covered up, co cover it up somehow. I have to say something. I began to realize that this could be the very last time I see Inoue for as long as either of us live. I'd opened my mouth, and it was the gape as I struggled to find anything meaningful to say. Then Inoue sc screamed at me, turning the pit in my stomach inside out. Shit. I shut my eyes tightly and turned around and ran away. Then, promise me. Promise me that you'll meet back at Osaka Castle. I'll be waiting. With that, I broke into a sprint far away from them. You know, he told me the other day that everyone has their role to play in the time of war. That we couldn't afford to be impatient. Now, I think I finally hit the time you know I had been talking about. There was no reason for people to die needlessly when they still have a purpose to serve. Under the blood red sky, I repeated this sentiment over and over again to push myself, one leg after the other, through this mountainous path. Went zoomy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, he knows he's dead, huh? <gasps> I flung my legs against the cold, arduous ground, running until I felt like my lungs would burst. Then the echo of footsteps alerted me from the distance and I rushed to hide in the bushes. I poked my head out from behind the bush to get a closer look. I saw enemy soldiers in a group. Had the enemies followed us all the way here? The enemy soldiers spoke casually amongst themselves as they hiked down the trail. I felt a great sense of relief as their footsteps got further away, and I exhaled greatly. Suddenly I was struck with the memory of moments I shared tenderly with Iba. <laughs> oh. I miss Iba. Oh. Eva. Eva had always shown me tender, tremendous kindness, and he seemed to want what was best for me. Flashbacks, bro. MC is no, 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 nah. Ah, if he were somewhere nearby, I could really use him for a time like this. However, expecting to find him in the moment felt like such a tough endeavor. So rather than lingering on that. I need to focus on getting these documents to Osaka Castle without letting anyone catch me. Imagine, bro, no, I don't want to imagine. I mustered all the power and started running again. MC dead, but Eba alive. I mean, that would be a really good angsty ending. So I couldn't be upset, but I'd be upset, you know? There was no way I could continue running. My heart nearly burst from my chest, and my throat was so dry it felt like I'd swallowed sand. Romeo Juliet ending? Oh my god. Too sad. Too sad. I haven't a moment to waste, and I needed to head to Osaka Castle as soon as possible. But my body didn't seem like it had anything left in it to get myself there. My exhaustion had consumed me, and I had lost my strength. 
I leaned against a tree for support. Every ounce of energy I had left in me was leaving, one painful ache at a time. <gasps> a familiar, soothing voice called me from afar. A voice belonging to someone I'd longed for dearly. Were my ears playing tricks? Was I hallucinating? Even possibly three sad. True. My legs gave out, and I was about to crumble to the stony ground. A pair of warm arms caught me del delicately, and then... <gasps> oh, damn! What are you wearing? You look good! Shut, shut the fuck up with that Heisuke bullshit. Do not bring that here. Not to this good Iba stream. No, 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 no. Iba? Surely I was hallucinating. But I wasn't. His hands held me tightly, giving me great comfort. His warmth almost rejuvenated me. This couldn't be a hallucination. Iba was here. He'd come back for me. Well, what are you doing here? You were some way from Yoro. After Iba had informed me of all that had transpired, he looked at me sweetly, asking me a question. Hijikata and the others are... I calmed my reggae breathing in order to get Iba back up to speed. So the Shinsegumi were holding their lines against the magistrate so I could escape. I... I must deliver this to Osaka Castle. I tightly gripped the knot of my knapsack, tied around my back snugly. I nodded curtly, nervous to answer. Just then? Oh my fucking god. In no way, like, I'm sorry you died, but you, you could not have- Are you serious? Are you serious? Like, it wasn't even like a, he was dead and I got burned another way. No, it was, he died so quick my dad was able to follow me. Suddenly, father had appeared out of nowhere, which startled me greatly. I can only assume that for my father to make it to me so quickly, you know I gave his life fighting. Bro, ain't no way. For real, for real. Eva, you look damn fine. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> you know, a useless in life and death. Yeah, for real, for real. Uh, when I die, I want Inoue to lower me into my grave so he can let me down one more time. Fuck's sake, man. <laughs> you don't have to introduce yourself to him, Iba. Father's eyes thinned as the memory returned to him. She's a bitch, Eva. Save me. You became immediately suspicious of father. Out of the darkness emerged Takeda, like a ghoul summoned by a shadowy mist. You know, I would probably just fall down into the grave. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> I swear to god, if you hurt Eva. I swear to god, bro. As Eba watched Takeda appear, his eyes widened with surprise. For real, I know, you cut his arm off and everything. Yay, <laughs> What's up with it? I feel like you got here just in time. This definitely feels like some sort of climax. Takeda laughed maniacally, and his right arm, previously severed by Iba, reached for his sword. Oh, that's... Oh! <laughs> the claws are nice, though. I do dig the claws. I dig it. I dig it. I just wish you weren't such an asshole and getting in the way of me having Iba time. 
Oh, shit. Takeda sprung from where he stood, charging towards Eva with a frightful lunge. Shit. He's shocked. He's gonna get hurt. Don't get hurt. Oh my god. Eva quickly drew his katana out in defense. As their blades met, sparks scattered above them like the steel hissed with each strike. Damn, you look good, Eva. Oh my god. And Takeda looks fucking crazy. What is going on? I was dumbfounded as well. I saw Eva cut off Takeda's arm. Takeda smirked sadistically, his eyes gazing down upon Iba as he broke into laughter. Just then I remembered something Sanan had said. Sanan had informed me that Takeda's behavior followed a similar path to his own. Sanan, too, had lost his left hand, ending, as he thought at that time, his life as a swordsman. However, Sanan was able to wield his blade once more because of... Iba, run! I screamed out for him, but... Oh my fucking god. Oh my fucking god. Oh my fucking god. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> Takeda going full grown lizard man regrowing an arm. Nah, full grown, not a vampire. Just get in an arm back, cause why the fuck not? Takeda's hair bleached into a brilliant white and his eyes morphed into red pools. Oh no! <laughs> then... <coughs> Eva's sword was effortlessly smacked out from his hands. Oh my fuck. Run! Run! Let's go! Let's go! Takeda was wore a confident, menacing grin. Takeda... Don't tell me you drank the water of life. My voice quivered as I asked him. Many famous Sengoku leaders are there? I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know enough of history to know who the fuck is who. It's just, do you think I'm special? Uh, I think everyone's special, Luna. Takeda was like, this isn't even, even my final form. <laughs> then how? The man standing before me wasn't the kind, loving father I'd grown up knowing. The words coming from his mouth were something else entirely. I shuddered. Is this man really my father? Oh my god. He gave him some other demon's arm? A creature that surpasses human strength? As I'd asked, Takeda chimed in. Takeda thick flexed his right arm, which was wrapped in thick bloody bandages. <gasps> Oh. Ayo, hey, what the fuck, bald bro? Mysterio. <laughs> God damn it. All the bandages were torn off, and we all witnessed the gruesome abomination that was placed on Takeda's arm used to be. He no longer looked human, and Ebo was frightened by the intimidating display. <laughs> Oh 
I don't know. I think it's just like demon symbols. <laughs> Iba remained in his fighting stance as he fixed his gaze on Takeda. It is Edo period. Yes. Okay. So not single. Got you. It is Edo period. Eva, watch out. Oh, this is giving me so much anxiety. An electric duel erupted between Eva and Takeda as their clashing blades echoed through the mountains. Oh, my God. Eva kept up with the pace of Takeda's swing somewhat, parrying each strike well, but then... It was clear whose strength was greater. Takeda's technique better resembled a wild beast, and he left Iba no room to breathe. Iba! I tried running up to him. My father grabbed my arm and held me back. Please let me go at this rate, Iba will. I screamed frantically. Do not. Do not. Please. Please don't. Uh, Eva cried in anguish as his blood splattered wildly. I couldn't just sit there and watch him in pain. Good, I'm glad we kicked our dad in the nuts. I pushed my father- oh, I pushed him. I pushed my father away and ran towards Eva. This is a big concern. <gasps> I don't- I don't- No, 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 I don't like that face he's making at all. It's making me sad. <laughs> Eva, Eva, please tell me you're okay. His left arm was sliced open, leaving what looked like severe disfigurement. Even I could see that it would be impossible for Eva to ever wield the sword again. Oh my god. The bone was snapped and his flesh and muscles were torn apart, oozing blood onto the rocks. Even then... Iba had the strength to grit his teeth, holding his pained groans back. I'm sure that this pain was agonizing. I'm surprised he hadn't fainted from the shock. He wielded such an incredible courage and willpower to maintain consciousness, it was nearly godlike. Takeda sneered over Iba, laughing to himself. Somehow Iba was able to return his taunts with fierce glance. As soon as Eva heard Takeda's insult, his eyes became thirsty for vengeance. Father, who had been standing behind Takeda, spoke out in a low tone. It seemed like my father was reminding him of something, and Takeda became disinterested. Takeda stepped towards me. Eva's face warped in pain, and as he struggled to get up, However, it seemed like Eva couldn't balance himself well, and he fell back to the floor. Eva! I ran up to him and lifted his head up. Eva's eyes burned with a righteous fury, and he snapped back at Takeda. I'm 
It is. It's really rough. Oh my god. I wanted to tell him that he needed to conserve his strength, but I held back from stopping him. He looked at me and smiled warmly. <laughs> where they're like, man, I know it's sad, but for me, it's only five pixels, man. <laughs> huh? The tender glow of nostalgia began to sparkle inside me. What were those words? What happened to me when I was little? Oh my fucking god. I'm actually, like, tearing up. I hate this. Takeda raised his bloodstained sword in the air and began swinging it towards us, and then... Miss Sen? Is this Miss Sen? That voice. Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! Let's go! Let's go! Oh, the, s the music. Oh. Oh shit. Miss Sen, yes. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Sen silently shot a grim look towards my father. Her voice loomed over us all as she carried with a declaration directed directly at him. Ah. Yase Village? Demon Arm? I had no idea what Sen was talking about. However, it seemed as though she was well informed on the subtext of my father and Takeda's relationship. <laughs> Mami Kimikiku, yeah! Sen gasped, turning toward us. As father had pointed out, Iapa's bleeding hadn't ceased, and his skin turned completely pale. At this rate, it was obvious he had only moments left to live. Kimigiku whispered in Sen's ears. For a brief second, Sen's eyes were colored with looked like anxiety. But immediately she returned to her noble state. Kimigiku answered with a confident smile. I feel way more confident in her than I fucking did in Noe. Oh my god. Sen then lended me her shoulder. I nodded back at Sen and I got up, lending Eva support with my shoulders. And then. Takeda sprinted at the speed of a fury in order to intercept us, but then... To be fair, she has a full head of hair. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> she has her life way more together than Inoue does. With help from Sen and Kimikuku, we were able to flee from my father and Takeda. As we ran down the mountainous road, we arrived at a village. As soon as I took in the sights, however, an unmistakable rush of nostalgia came over me. Oh. It had been my first time ever stepping foot here, but I couldn't shake the strangest feeling of deja vu. Like I'd been in this exact spot ages ago. When I had first learned that I came from a demon family, I had my doubts, but this weird sensation of familiarity seemed to confirm my lineage to me in the heart at long last.
<laughs> Even though he's dying, he's just like, thank you so much for your help, bro. I got the strangest feeling this maybe is the first time here. <laughs> <sighs> I wonder if she makes Eva part of the vampire state. Oh my god. That would be- that would be something. Thank you, son. Ooh! This is nice! Sen led us to an old, quaint wooden building in the back of Yase village. Since we'd walked in, a feeling of serene grace warmed me with every step. Imagine, though? Yeah. Or she's gonna use some of that not-vampire magic to heal him? Bruh. I, I hope so. I am so scared that Eva's just gonna lose his arm. With any hope, the positive aura of the village will do well to improve Eva. Or at least, that was what I had hoped I'd work to replace his blood-soaked bandages. And then... No, I'm fine. I'm not sleepy. This place looks nice, but I just thinking they still haven't done much to help stabilize this condition. Yeah. Yeah. Considering how we keep saying how we're just switching out his really bloody bandages, I'm like, dang, so that wound's not closing up. Yikes. And if they're talking about me not having slept in a few days, that means we've been here a few days. Yikes. The curtness of her request and demeanor read to me like Sen had something urgent to share. It worked for Dio, though? Oh my gosh. It's hard to believe Eba in his current state, even for a second, but... Okay, I'll be right there. Sen and Kimiguku saved our lives. It would have been unbecoming for me to do them any disrespect, so I did whatever she asked me. Big yikers indeed, yeah. Right. Takeda's sword hadn't just left a flesh wound. Bones, arteries, muscles, they had all been completely severed. If it were a simple matter of stitching up the deep gash, it would have been easy, but... Even Western medicine, there was nothing we could do to stop the bleeding. And that means... Sen sighed, rubbing her forehead delicately as she shared the news. Then a rustle came from somewhere in the building, and then... As I rushed to turn around, there stood... Where's internet man? More than partly, where's daddy? Uh, Ryusu? Uh, I'm gonna need you to stay strong and hear what I'm gonna say. I don't think we're gonna see Hijikata again in this in this playthrough. I think we're just gonna be wrapping up with Iba and that's it. I'm sorry to say, but I don't think we're gonna get to see Hijikata again. I think this is all gonna be Iba now. Surely we won't muffin. <laughs> Iba looked at Sen, his face pale and sweaty. For a second, Sen seemed like she was about to answer, but she realized quickly that anything she said would only hurt him, so she nodded quietly, knowing how much pain it would cause. You're gonna miss Daddy Hijikata. Mm -hmm. He'll live on in our hearts. Hearing Sen's words, Eva's eyelids flickered. Then Eva shut his eyes tightly and crumbled to his knees. Oh, Eva! Are you gonna be okay? I rushed beside him, supporting his body as I looked close to him, collapsing. Kimigiku and I helped Eva stand, and we returned inside. Secret Hijikata ending. Stop. He faint? Yeah, it looked like it. Eva's voice seemed to be a lot calmer compared to his initial reaction. His disappointment and shock were no small things to overcome. 
The manner in which his composure returned was impressive. Iba looked Sen straight in the eye and responded. His positive, earnest words brought such warmth to my worried heart. How was he able to hold his head up high or keep himself from giving up? Like always, Iba was speaking from his heart with sincerity. I could see a lot of the Shinsugumi in him. His spirit was unwavering, and his unrelenting politeness in his voice spoke volumes about him. Determination 100, right? He's that, like, really wholesome meme where it's like, despite everything, it's still you. Oh my god. Neither Sen, Kimiguku, or I could bring ourselves to interrupt him, listening to him speak. Honestly, what could any of us say? Sen gave a small sigh. Just as she was about to oblige, I'll, uh, she turned like she had heard something and looked at Kimikuku. Kimikuku bowed briefly and she went outside. I wondered what it was. Had someone been eavesdropping? Without a beat, Sen burned back to face Iba, continuing on. There is regret in Sen's voice. So what's the deal with the demon arm? And how in the world were my father or Takeda able to obtain such a thing? Ooh. Oh shit. <laughs> Hearing about our ancestors in the demon clans, having it said out loud was bizarre reality. However, the seriousness in which Sen spoke told me that this was no fairy tale or myth. After pausing for a moment to breathe, she turned to face after grabbing my hand gently. My hand began to shake as it rested in hers. Why had father done such a thing? The thought of him behaving so selfishly was shocking, even though I saw his deranged face. The fact alone that my father had been continuing his fury experiments meant lives were being lost. It pained me, 
and I welled with frustration, sadness, and an unshakable guilt. I couldn't look up. Eva. <laughs> oh my god. I shook my head. If Eva, after losing his arm and being wounded, could be this strong, there was no way I could let my feelings get the better of me. No. I'm fine. Please continue. Shen nodded and continued. Sen bit her lips tightly. Sen wasn't in the wrong for thinking this. Not only had my father time and time again caused problems for the Shinsugumi, but now he was committing crimes against his fellow people. My eyes were damp with angry tears, and I was trying my best to restrain, but Iba, who up until this point had been listening quietly, muttered aloud. He's not wrong. Give him a gun. I think he'll be fine. Yeah, so here- gun arm? <laughs> but here's a- here's a crazy idea. What if? Because that demon general she was talking about, right? He had to have two arms, right? Can we just go get the other one and put it on Eva? Eva became Mega Man's- <laughs> Eva shut his eyes out of frustration, then he glanced out at me. Oh. My eyes grew wide. His mention of this could only meant one thing at this point. But before I could stop him, Eva continued. I understood where Eva was coming from, but... I can't do that. There's no way I would agree to this. I had to watch both Sanan and Heisuke suffer closely. But Eva wouldn't back down. I wasn't saying that, but... Eva spoke up in frustration. Eva looked pained, but he hung his head low. However, Sen continued with fierce determination, shining it from her eyes. Ooh. Before she finished, Sen pulled something out of before the two of us. <gasps> My eyes grew wide and I gulped. If what Takeda had on was the right arm, then Sen was showing us was the left arm. Sen seems to have the same idea. Demon girls, we stick together. One brain cell, baby. <laughs> oh. Eva stared intently at the Dima arm. Sen! Considering her own responsibilities, it had only been natural that she would suggest this, but... I still couldn't get myself to agree to it. To not only turn Iba into a fury, but to top it off, infuse him with the power of the demons? Oh my god. There was no way I could be angry at Sen. In fact, the reason why Sen was in this position at all to begin with was because of my own father had done. Imagine Eva being just as power- Ooh. 
Imagine Eva with the white hair and red eyes. Ooh. Ooh. Ticket, I could only win against him with the demon arm, so just imagine the rematch, right? Oh my god, Takeda will get spanked. Get that arm cut off again. Honestly, that I'm thinking about it. It's good that he becomes a demon. I am also a demon. We could have demon babies. Spanked by that demon art. <laughs> right? Eva. <laughs> he hits me with his human arm and I just- No, no, no. Hit me. Spank me with the demon arm. That's the one that's spicy. <laughs> he would have given he would be giving up his humanity not a bad idea that meant that he could no longer fight alongside the Shinsegumi which for him was nearly unthinkable considering his lifetime friends were such a crucial part of himself even then Like, the human one, it would just feel normal, but I imagine getting spanked by the demon arm, it would feel like, you know when you chew like that, uh, cinnamon gum? Like that. Like, how it feels to chew five gum. You know? <laughs> For a while, Iba stared back at the demon arm, eventually closing his eyes and muttering to himself. After Eva said this, he turned to face me once again. He said love. He said love. <gasps> what should I say? Uh, okay. I'm gonna take a quick bathroom break. And I'll be back. I don't know what choice. I will also use my bathroom break to think about what choice. Alright. A BRB. <laughs>
Oi, we're back, baby. Uh, about to pass mile 666. Yo! Wait, what was this question? He's asking uh, if we should... He's like, he asked me for the water of life that I have. Because he'll need that to fuse with the demon arm. Oh, and at first we said no. But now he's asking again after we have come to the conclusion that it is our best plan. <laughs> so I want to say yes so he can have the demon arm. I'm going to go with yes. I think I'm going to go with yes. You know, pray, pray to God that that doesn't lock in a bad ending somehow. Uh, okay. Okay. So this is the only way, huh? Demon baby's route? I hope so. I really hope so. It must have been the obvious question to Eva, but I still felt wrong to me. Eva silently nodded. His clear eyes showed his clear eyes show glowed abs resolutely. I mean it would make sense seeing so you're both be demons. True, see? Mm-hmm. Now we're thinking. Mm-hmm. Seeing his expression in the moment reminded me of the moment that Sanon had decided to drink the water of life. Sanon had mentioned that losing one's arm was essentially death to any swordsman. I suppose Eva had felt the same, both of them deeply committed to their duties as warriors. To feel concerned, suffocating under the responsibility of having no other real solution and choosing this. And I thought to myself that because I understood where Eva had been coming from, I couldn't bring myself to stop him. Honestly, I want nothing less for you than become a fury. Okay, good. Thank God. My throat squeezed as the words left my mouth, and Eva smiled despite my insistence. I considered what it could be for a second, then no, but no idea came to mind. You dumb bitch. Eva blushed tenderly, and his cheeks were rosy as he offered his answer. to be a demon with me what a man what a man <laughs> oh his promise maybe that's right he was talking about the time Takeda called me a beast no that can't have been it if I look back far enough I recall a moment in our distant past but where ah oh, that's right it was during our childhood as many other children would have gathered to place around the clinic but children stopped coming to visit after a certain incident. At that time, some of the other children had required a ladder, climbing up to reach the clinic's roof. You guys, don't climb up there! You'll get hurt! However, no one else listened to me. It's adorable. Yeah? Yeah? Someone had been pretending to be a firefighter and had climbed up the ladder and it tipped over. Watch out! I lost sight of myself and ran to the ladder. Then... Ugh. The ladder toppled over, and I had fallen with it. My arm received a deep cut from the stone beside me. Yikes! Ouch. Oh, this is fine. It's not too bad. It'll heal up. After saying this, after counting internally to ten, it healed completely. The neighborhood children widened their eyes in surprise, ent entranced by my healing powers. Then... My wounds heal fast. I didn't notice it until recently, but I didn't know it was too it wasn't too common. The children didn't wait for me to finish. Oh. Before I could call them back, all the children scattered from the yard. And the next day, other children had come to visit and see me at my home. For me it was normal for my injuries to heal quickly. I didn't know I was different. 
Never in my wildest imagination did I expect people to show surprise, let alone hatred, towards me because of something like this. And it didn't end there. The children began flinging rocks at the clinic, and I could see the passerby whispering rumors about me as they walked by our clinic. What kind of child would have the foresight to know that their body was different? Even so, every child I had grown up with played and learned to treat me like I was seething contempt. People hated what they didn't know. They didn't know me, and it crushed me inside to believe it. And then... Iba, who had called... Who what I'd called Hachiro back then, was studying my father's books and came running out of my father's clinic. Wait, Hachiro, it's okay. I couldn't bring myself to speak, so I stayed silent. If I had told Hachiro what I was, even he might begin to hate me. He quietly urged me to speak up, so I timidly told him. It's my fault they're making fun of me. I can't stop it. Hachiro seemed to have a word stuck in the tip of his tongue, waiting to respond, and then... Huh? Well... I shook my head. Hachiro had always been so kind to me. I loved him. Even if I were different, nothing could change how I felt about him. His words seemed to heal the wounds that were hurting my heart. If you don't, if you don't tell me, I won't know that part of Eva never changed. Oh my god, it's so fucking cute! Okay. Also, it's just fucking the way he was just like, well, if you, if I was a monster, would you hate me? Like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Hachiro had been able to settle a lot of the uneasiness in my heart, but the pain of losing all my friends in this, that's lie was, I was some monster was a little too hard to. Uh, Beat them up? You? His finger was slender like a little girl's, and the thought of him becoming a warrior was so strange to me that I couldn't help but question it. <gasps> no! Are you serious? He got good with a sword for me? For me? Oh, that's so fucking cute! My heart. The brightness of his wild smile felt more warm than usual. Mm, what kind of monster, Hachi? <laughs> oh my god. And just like that, I felt many of my worries slip away from under me. Oh my god, he became this like renowned swordsman because he wanted to be good to protect me. Oh my god. My brother, my brother in Christ, the most man ever. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Stop! Eva stared at me with an unwavering disposition. My love for him made my heart heavy with worry. However, if Eva's true purpose was to live life by the sword, there's only one thing I could do to help him. I had reached into the pocket and grabbed the glass vial and placed it in front of him. His voice trembled. He held the bottle, looking at it with a peculiar sense of wonder, and placed it back in his pocket. Just then... Oh my god. 
Bloom, will you drop these? Thank you, yeah, I need those. <laughs> oh, shit. Peru, let's hurry up. Let's get this arm on him. Okay? Let's go fast. Okay. Like, just pop it on. Let's go. I nodded back to her sternly, and Eva and I gathered ourselves to leave the room. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I heard the sound of flesh being sliced open, along with a brutal, blood-curdling scream. Then, a man covered in blood burst in, falling to the floor. This man! I think he was the one who had been guarding the entrance to the building. Sun glared angrily in the direction of the forest. Pop that arm on like a Lego piece. Yep, yeah, for real though. Let's go. <laughs> Shortly afterwards, a figure was approaching us casually. Someone I had no desire to see. <laughs> Father, Takeda, what are you doing here? Sen had stood in an indignant rage, glaring at my father. Father, however, seemed unfazed. Kimigiku readied her stance, preparing herself to fight Takeda, but... To get to seem to move three paces quicker. <coughs> Flustered by the rapid swings of Takeda's fist, Kimigiku was eventually thrown to the side. <laughs> he gazed over Kimigiku's body on the floor and turned to face Eva. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Iba unsheathed his sword, bracing himself to block the strike from Takeda. Oh my god. Takeda anticipated Iba's counterattack, intercepting his sword easily. If it came to the two men engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat, there was no way Iba could stand a chance. Both he and his sword were flung aside. What could I do? I knew that I wasn't really any match for Takeda. However, abandoning Iba and Kimigiku to escape was not an option. Though my hands were still trembling, I nervously reached for the Kodachi at my hips. <laughs> I had a small window of time to find an opening into which I could strike Takeda. However, a hateful aura radiated from his entire body, intimidating me from stepping forward. I had to close my ears. Blocking out the hateful thoughts to step forward to conquer my fear. I heard the shattering glass, and then. He popped it on like a Lego piece. Let's go! Yes. To get his eyes were wide with shock. There was a coldness in Eva's tone, puffing his chest and arms confidently. To get a furrow at his brows. Scowling at Eva as his teeth gritted from hatred. Not a vampire. Blood sucking beast. Not a vampire. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> Sorry, I was I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Let me just uh 
Come on, get a sip. Get a sip from my drink. Holy shit. Whew. Okay. <laughs> oh. Eva responded stoically, continuing on with a fixed gaze on Takeda. For sure, absolutely not a vampire. <laughs> Damn, though. Damn, though. Look at him. Ugh. He's got claws. Fuck. Shit. His sleeves, like, rolled up. Fuck. Fuck. We could just sit on this screen for a few hours, bro. Shit. Yeah. The floor shook beneath Iba as he gathered his strength, causing Takeda to step back slowly. Oh, damn, does he look good. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Fuck me up with that. Hold on, sorry. I'm just gonna get a quick screenshot for me. <laughs> okay, good. Save that. <laughs> oh. Immediately, Eva had unsheathed his sword, and by the time I blinked, he had already closed the distance between himself and Takeda. Their swords danced in a flurry of murmurs, too quick to see with my eyes, and Eva's newfound strength and speed made him display masterfully. <laughs> you bitch. Now what? Takeda struggled to keep up with the pace of Iba's barrage of strikes, panting, panting in the frenzy. If there was a sudden question, if there was a question as to which two demons were stronger, it was clear Iba had the advantage. Fuck yeah, Iba has the advantage. Playing on Steam should be able to lift 12. Oh shit, I didn't realize that. I am playing on Steam. <laughs> That's okay. We got the screenshot. We got it. I got it. I got it. Reluctantly, Takeda heeded my father's words, sheathing his sword back into the scabbard. Wait! I had brushed up to stop them, but... Father and Takeda vanished like mist without a trace. Ooh. After we had regrouped ourselves, we sat with Sen and Kimikuku about what to do next. Just, you know, thank you, yes, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. I'm always so scared to hit any of the F buttons. Because, like, also, my keyboard is the one where it's like, uh, for example, F3 is volume up. So if there was a button that I needed to hit F3 for, it would just turn the volume up. And it wouldn't actually do the other thing. Will you both be okay? Just earlier, it seemed like neither of them stood a chance against Decada. If they were to meet him again on the battlefield, how would they overcome or be any different? I don't know. Sen and Kimikuku seemed set in the resolve to find him, but I could sense what felt like a little bit of nervousness towards what was about to come. Thank you, Sen. I don't know how I can ever repay you. I can't thank you enough. Oh, 
の方法があればあなたの大切な人を挫折になんてしなくても済んだのにそれはいいこなしです少なくともこの戦が終わるまでそれじゃあそろそろ行きましょうか Oh, he's got that hot demon bandage thing going on too. Fuck, fuck me up with that. Yeah, touch me with that hand. That one. Shit. Give me little scratch marks and shit. Okay, please send a Kimikuku, be careful. Uh, I'll return it when. It's, bro, don't say that. After we have said our goodbyes, we bow to them, walking out of the village back towards Osaka Castle. I have no idea how the fight against Decade and Father will turn out, but from now, ours is another path. All we can do now is move forward, no matter what awaits us. With a newfound resolve for the future, Iba and I made our descent down the path of the mountain. After becoming separated from Sen, we had left the Yase village and headed towards Osaka Castle. We happened to sneak past what was left of the Satsuma Choshu troops a few times. Four days had passed since the fighting broke out, and on January 7th, we had finally arrived at Osaka Castle. <laughs> With your good hand. <laughs> We're here. We're finally here. Seeing the majestic castle filled me with an incredible amount of relief. You say that, but how do you know? Iba looked up, marveling at the guard castle as it loomed over the moonlit forest. Or grand castle, fuck, I can't read. I too felt quite overwhelmed by the view, but it seemed like Iba's expression indicated he was struck on something that he couldn't shake off. Eventually, he turned and looked at me. Nice. What is it? I had no idea what favor he could possibly be thinking of at a time like this, so I waited nervously for him to continue. What? But... I can understand why he may not have wanted his lifelong time friends to know he'd become a fury, but... His health could dwindle in the future, and it wasn't because the fury was something he could hide forever. However, Iba seemed to read the concern in my face, and he continued. Iba watched the moonlit radiate as the cold light behind the clouds above. Was it for my sake that he seemed conflicted about all this? Um, so... How have you been feeling? That's good. I'm happy to hear it. Iba hadn't seemed to suffer any afflictions that it came with becoming a fury or attaching himself to the demon arm. In my heart, though, it made me wish, even if I knew, even if I knew it may not have come to anything. I had prayed that the water of life, nor Iba's new demonic limb, would do him any harm. I gasped, looking up to see. Two shadows crept in the distance, walking towards us. Hey! Shimada and Soma, both of you are safe. I'm fine. Iba saved me and escorted me back here safely. After Hachiro offered up his suggestion, Shimada and Soma looked at another, falling silent. After a beat, Eva seemed to catch on to the pause in the conversation, and it prompted him to ask. Oh boy. The war with the Satsuma Choshu seemed to produce an uneasy atmosphere at Osaka Castle. Not a single person we walked past, however, was in uniform, nor did they seem prepared to fight or return to the battlefield. I found this quite perplexing, thinking to myself, as if we entered a common room. Hey, Rusu! Your daddy! He was back! Hey! 
I didn't think we'd see him again. I thought the Evo route was gonna end with us in that village. I don't know. Hijikata! I'm sorry, I didn't mean to worry you guys. The subject I had been avoiding to think about was brought up. I don't know what I could say that would have come out wrong. In no way. So he did. Back then, I could only hope that he hadn't been so. Such fears had crossed my mind all the time. Connection is spotty. Just missed the last few minutes. Ah, I see. I was saying congratulations to Risu. His, his daddy's here again. Also, also something about them not being ready to attack. Like, we're not gonna go back to war. Something like that. We haven't really got details. We just came in and, like, she just was like, oh my god, I can't believe no one's ready for battle. That's so weird. And now we're talking to Hijikata. Hijikata looked down, biting his lips. Oh yeah, and he confirmed Inoue is very dead. <laughs> Not that we were even the slightest bit worried about him surviving, you know? <laughs> I gasped. Every breath felt heavy, like my lungs had suddenly filled with water. The gentle soul Inoue. As I had been accumulating here myself, he accumulating here myself, he always gave me so much support. The thing is someone so kind hunter died so needlessly. It was the beginning to be consumed with all the guilt, and he just kinda seemed to read my mood continuing on. Although he didn't want to show it, Hijikata was overcome with emotion, and as I watched his eyes focus back tear force back tears, my stomach was sinking. Oh no, my precious boy no way, right? <laughs> oh no. He was my favorite Shinsegumi captain. Said no one. Yeah, what is it? Ooh. I'm so surprised he's gone. Same. I can't believe it. Hearing even more bad news had sunk what little hope I had in the deep, crushing nothingness. Judging by the way Hijikata had said it, Yamazaki must have been hurt really bad. I understood what Hijikata may have wanted to save me from hearing was the reality of it, but... No, it's fine. I'll see him as soon as I can. Please, if I may. Hijikata had seemed to loosen up a bit. And while I had been hearing about what had become of some of my comrades, Iba was celebrating his reunion with Motoyama. Iba! <laughs> I mean, but that was pretty brave of him to do the right thing. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Meanwhile, Eva's fanboy is just like, oh my god, I'm so happy you're fine. <laughs> It wasn't noticeable, I think, to anyone else. Probably knew he couldn't do much anything against them and delayed them as much as he could. Yeah, it's true. It's true. We're giving him a lot of shit, but he did he did do 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 good. Good job, Inoue. He just got a lot of a huge breath, gritting his teeth and facing downwards. You know what else Eva right now gives me vibes of? Now he's kind of giving me like Haji from Blood Plus with the bandaged up arm and everything, the ponytail. Shit. No wonder I like him so much. Fuck me. Hijikata was the one that spoke up. Bitch down. <laughs> Good job, I guess. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't with Inoue being like, Oh, I'll buy you time, and he lasted like 30 seconds. And Hijikata being like, all of his wounds are on the front, which means he stood his ground. I'm like, no, it means he was too slow to turn around. Okay? I appreciate his sacrifice, but in the end, it didn't really mean much, did it? Reminds you of that one girl from Guilty Gear? Oh, shit. Fair. Eva was awestruck, seemingly at a loss for words as he froze from hearing the bad news. His gaze fell to the floor. There seemed to be a strained effort coming from Eva to appear composed in front of Hijikata. However, it seemed like there was nothing he could say to oppose Hijikata's words. Sword wound with one arm? Oh, okay. Oh wait, hold on, let me try. Uh, guilty. Here. Sword woman. With one I could see it. I see it. I get you. By biking. Biking. Yeah. I get the vibe. I feel you. After a brief pause, Ipa quietly lifted his head. Oh, okay. My heart was pounding as the weight of the bad news was sinking in. However, I can't just sulk forever. Hijikata, Iba, and the men of the Shinsukumi hadn't shown any sign of giving up yet. Even must have felt guilty from the actions of <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was the loudest sh fucking horn I've ever heard. Iba must have felt guilty by the actions of Lord Yoshinobu and the abandonment of the Shinsugumi and the rest of the Shogunate army. Iba felt a sense of relief from Hijikata's understanding and he smiled in return. Then he and Motoyama stood up. Oh. I found myself speaking out involuntarily, coaxed by the thought of Iba leaving me. Iba stopped and looked at me. I had almost apologized instinctively, but I was able to stop myself. I think that if I had apologized, it would have brought Eva's mood down again. Eva, I can't thank you enough for everything. Eva smiled kindly, like he usually does in response. Wait, are you leaving? I gasped from hearing his request, looking around to see if Moriyama had overheard him. Yeah. I had been escorting the two of them to the exit when. <laughs> Everyone trying to be like, where are they? They didn't say hi to us yet. All of a sudden, Nagakura, Harada, Heisuke came bursting into the common room. Their eyes fixated dead on me. Aww. Nah, I'm fine. I'm sorry for worrying you guys. Iba watched the Sinsugumi captains gather around me, but eventually... I watched from out of the corner of my eye. 
can leave with Motoyama. Ooh, final chapter. Final chapter. I was in the middle of organizing some of the medical supplies, as Dr. Matsumoto had asked me. After finishing up my cleaning, my thoughts lingered on how Yamazaki was. Last night, I checked on to see how his treatment was going, but the wounds were serious. According to Dr. Matsumoto, he would know by tonight or tomorrow if he could make it. Epilogue? It looks like it. It said final chapter. Like, it, it didn't even say, like, chapter six. It literally just said final chapter. So here we go. We got this. We can finish it. Hijikata seemed prepared for the worst, offering only a worn, tired smile in response. The Shinsugumi had sadly experienced some of the huge blows of the outcome of this war. こんなところにいたんですか。江戸に戻る前に働き者ですね。江戸に戻る前に。ファック。挨拶ぐらいはしておきたかったから。キスキスミ。キスミユフォー。イデンシンライクヒウズエクスペリエンシングエニネガティブ
Usually he just watched me tenderly as I left him behind. But never before had he said outright that he didn't want me to go. More sunlight peeked through the corner of the window, making Eba's eyes squint cutely. Oh my god. His voice quivered, and for the first time, Eva seemed vulnerable to me. Eva's eyes turned forlorn after confessing his worries to me, and he gripped his left arm which was covered in blood-soaked wrap. I couldn't just watch as he beat himself up. Well, we'll see each other again in Edo, right? Eva quickly turned his head up, taking comfort from my suggestion. <laughs> Eva gave a warrior smile and a big sigh. Eva held his left arm tightly, using it as an outlet to channel his turmoil bubbling inside him. After a short while, we both stared at the sun, which was completely completing its morning ascent. There was still so much to worry about, like Takeda, Father, and Eva's new demon appendage. But even with all that, Eva and I could share in the beauty of this new day together. So cute. Bye. Hey, we did it. Yay, Eva route. Woo. That seemed like a good ending, so I'm, I'll take that. And there he is, our man. Oh my god. Yo, this music. Yeah! Oh. Pachi pachi pachi, yeah! Pachi pachi pachi. Also, pats on back. This, I'm pretty sure this is a good ending, right? Pats on back? Because I feel like normally when I play this game without a guide, bad ending. Like, 100%. But this seems good. I think we're good. Woo! That's our man! That's us! Look at us! We're so cute! Woo! I damn. <laughs> oh, there it is again. Fuck me up with that! Yes! I was gonna say at the time, but you were on Eva's good route and successfully made it the right choice for his good ending. Oh my god, really? Yeah! It's like he was meant for me. He's truly, truly my Hakuoki husbando. Truly, truly. You fell asleep. No worries, Risu. I'm glad you got some rest. We got the good ending, Risu! Hey! And I think maybe you might have been passed out, but you're. Hijikata did come back on the screen for a minute. He was there for you. He did come back for a minute. So, I was wrong. You did get to see him one more time. Oh shit, after credit scene? January 1868. <laughs> the Battle of Toba Fushimi ended with the Satsuma and Choshu victories. As the shogunate troops retreated, the Shinzugumi headed towards Edo. Four years ago, I came to Kyoto all by myself in search of my father and met the Shinsegumi. I'm going to leave the city of Kyoto where I had made those fond memories of the Shinsegumi. He gained the powers of a demon in order to protect me, and I have chosen to walk beside him. We're going to head to Edo, without knowing what fate awaits us. Oh yeah, let's go. Yeah! Finn. Yay! Woo! Pachi, pachi, pachi!
Well, <laughs> now when we do need another break, or when we do want to start a different book, I will go get Edo Blossoms re-downloaded, and we can do the Eba route there too. To see how it continues, how his story finishes. Daddy Hichikata came to see me. He really did. He really, really did. <laughs> Yo, I'm so happy we finally got to the end. That was such a good one. I'm so proud. I just can't believe it. Eva, Eva and I really are meant to be together. The fact that I got his good ending without a guide. Oh my god. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. Ah. <laughs> oh, so good, girl. So good. Man. Imagine the things he's gonna do to me with his, uh, his new demon appendage, you know what I mean? <laughs> Gotta get the full Eva story for facts, facts, facts. <laughs> yeah, so we'll have to bust that one out and do, uh, Hakuroki. I think it's called... This one is called... Wait, hold on. What is this one called? Oh my god, I have so many things open. Okay, this one's called Kyoto Wins. And so the other one is called Edo Blossoms. So it's Edo Blossoms we gotta do next. Let's go! Yeah, yeah, yeah! There were a few decisions that didn't follow the walkthrough, but I don't think it ultimately mattered. Yeah, yeah. That's I think that's why Hakuoki is so well-loved? Question mark? Is it the right word? I don't know, respected? Is that, I think I kind of talked about it in one of the other playthroughs, where it's like, we came to a decision, and it was like, of course we chose, we tried to choose the one that would lead to Eva, right? But it's like, if you chose one, it's not like Eva hated you, it's just like, you got a point in a different guy. You know what I mean? So I feel like there are some decisions where it's like, neither one was for Eva, and Say, like, it was between, like, a decision for Heisuke and a decision for Hijikata. If we picked the Hijikata one, we got a scene with Hijikata, right? That's what I think happened. I feel like happens? Question mark? I don't know. <laughs> I just know that, like, for literally every other man in this I had to do, I had to, like, follow a guide religiously. Uh, what, fuck, what's his name? Not Okita. Uh, the one that had the spear, the red hair, ponytail, really tall. When I did his, even when I was following a guide, I got the bad ending twice. <laughs> like, that's how complicated I feel like it gets. Like, Iba and Kazuma, because they're not the Shinsegumi, it's a lot easier for you to pick out which choices are for them. But when it's, like, the Shinsegumi, I feel like it's just so muddy. Because, like, picking one could lead you to three different guys, right? It's- oh my god. So yeah, maybe it's easier if you go for like a really obvious choice like Hijikata. But yeah, when I did his- what's well, not Okita. I forget his name already. Soji? Sanji? Whatever the fuck. The one who had the spear. He uses the spear. I got his bad ending twice because that fucking walkthrough didn't help for shit. But yeah. So this was super great. I'm finally glad we finished it. It felt like we've been reading this one for so long, but I also feel it's because like so many of the streams I had to cut closer, like, or cut shorter. <laughs> uh, the game designer in me suspects that every possible route had separate points lists, and you go into different routes in each chapter, whoever you made the most points with. Yo, that sounds, that sounds right. Heisuke? No, not Heisuke. Fuck Heisuke. I, I have not done his route. Hold up. Maybe I can just pull it up. Yeah, let me. Oh, it's going to slowly fade out. All right, you take your time. You go ahead. Not that we got anything better to do. Oh, brother. Achievement unlocked. Eva's route clear. Um. Sa Sananosuke Harada. He's the one. I got his bad ending twice. I don't think I've... I did Kazuma's. Was the other person I've done the routes for. Yeah, he's pretty good too. I won't lie. I really like the Cosmo one. I thought his route was really, really good. Didn't help the chapter three was five sessions. Yeah. But again, some of that's my fault because I made some of the streams are just I were I did so short. <laughs> Cosmo's really good. A big chungus of a chapter. Yeah. No, for real, for real.
Shit, he has a route? I feel like he was only in half the book. And yeah, we finally finished this one! <laughs> this is for me. Is for me. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I don't have any of his pictures. Apparently I almost went on the Sanan route at some point. Yeah. Aw, <laughs> oh, yes. The ending I wanted. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It's also interesting it's just how many routes. Like, not even just, like, men. But, like, how many different ways the story can go. I mean, like, because look, look at that one with Heisuke. Like... I think what, how, whatever route I was doing where I got that picture of him all bloody, I don't think he became a fury. I think he died. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So that's really interesting, too. Oops, shit. <laughs> Click the button again. Just ignore that one of him, Eva getting hurt. Yeah, what? What? Eva got hurt? Nah. He just, he popped his arm off like Legos. That's, Samurai are tr trained to do that. Eva. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Alright. But yes, thank you for sticking with me through this. To be honest, the other part that's always baffled me with branching visual novels. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know if we'll ever play it on stream, but my favorite, all-time favorite visual novel is Oz Mafia. It had a really, really cool mechanic that I haven't seen in any other visual novel, especially, like, the dating ones. It had this really cool mechanic where once... Okay, say, like, I got on the route with man, man number one, right? If you could also did options to, like, schmooze up man number two... Like, they both loved you. There was a point in the route where it's like, if you had them both loving you, you could be like, I break up with man number one to go with man number two. And then it's like, it's a completely different route because you were dating man number one for half the game, and now all of a sudden you're dating man number two. It's like so cool. I'm like, oh shit, that's so cool. And it, it's, it becomes a different like route for him. Like, you, it plays different. It's so cool. No, number one's a bit of a hottie. He is, yes. <laughs> like, the only time I ever did those switch routes was because the completionist in me, like, that was one of the visual novels I tried to 100%. So it's like I had to do the routes where it's like I had, I had to date somebody and then break up with them halfway through the game to date a different guy. <laughs> oh, that game also had a really cool ending where you just become, like, the mistress of a brothel and you start running shit with all your men sluts. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> Loved it. I can only imagine how much writing that would have been. Fuck, for real. <laughs> nah, couldn't be. Yeah, I just saw that. Nah, couldn't be. Eva never got hurt. Yep, yeah, what? I didn't. Yeah, I repressed that. He didn't get hurt. He's fine. He's my demon husband now. And we're gonna have demon babies, and he's gonna touch me with his good arm. Pleasure me with his demon appendage. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, okay, but. Right, so that was Hakuoki. Uh, Kyoto wins. Ibo route. Good ending. <laughs> Guide free. <laughs> Blind luck. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for sticking with me through the story. All lamb chops. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, tomorrow. We'll be streaming again some more Cult of the Lamb as we try and get a little bit closer to 100%ing that. We'll see how good that goes, though. <laughs> but yes, I'll say good night, goodbye. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>